All right, hello, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacori, your host for episode 92. Thanks very much for taking the time out of your days, whether you're in lockdown or you're actually working or a combination of both. Thanks for joining me. Sorry, it's been a while, a couple of weeks since my last show. I've actually just been really busy with work and family, so I finally found some time to sit down and record a show. So let me get to some of the stories I'm covering for today. Just wanted to highlight a quick story that came out about uh, recognizing that it's been 10 years now since the Leaf and the Volt have come out. That's the Chevy Volt with a V. And, you know, say what you want about the Leaf and the Volt. Um, they have they were pretty instrumental vehicles at their time. You know, the Leaf was the first mass marketed, truly mass marketed all electric vehicle that was targeted globally, that came out globally. And that was at a price point that was much more affordable than at the time would have been the Model S. Um, which is a great vehicle, of course, and some of the others uh, that came out since then, you know, Mitsubishi, iMave, and some of those others. But the, the Leaf was kind of groundbreaking in that it helped to really establish a foothold in the all-electric marketplace. And the Volt was another model where, for those that have that had range anxiety, and certainly there was, there was a lot of range anxiety, especially 10 years ago, when there really wasn't much charging infrastructure, um, that the Volt gave you the comfort of being able to drive a pretty good distance, 40 to 50 miles or, you know, 80 kilometers or so in battery only mode, and then have the engine kick in and keep you going for another, I don't know, 200 miles, 150 miles, something like that, 300 kilometers, 400 kilometers more, and to get to a gas station and you could ride in gas only. So, um, you know, the first year, the Leaf sold about uh, 10,000 models of the, um, that's in North America of their their leaf the nissan leaf and the bolt uh, ended up selling something around 157,000, 160,000 vehicles uh in north america in its lifetime and it's unfortunate that gm had discontinued the volt in 2019. Um, but you know basically it's good to recognize that these vehicles were groundbreaking and even though you know the leaf only had originally a, a range of 73 miles when it came out in the 24 kilowatt our version, um, it was still relatively groundbreaking for the time. And of course, when you look back now and see all the different models that are available today, how the ranges, how much they've increased for the average person now, a 200 mile is kind of table stakes for most people nowadays. It's kind of the, the minimum that you need to get into. Um, it's just, you know, good to recognize these vehicles and the importance that they played in helping to accelerate EV adoption. Now, staying in Europe, I talked about some of the Chinese manufacturers branching outside of uh, China into other areas from a marketplace perspective, and BYD is also doing the same thing. They are going to now offer the Han sedan, uh, electric sedan, in Europe. Um, it's going to be uh, at a base sales price of somewhere between 45 and 55,000 euros. You'll have to do the conversion for yourself. And they're going to incorporate a new battery for the European marketplace uh, with a 160 kilowatt motor. Could be a, a, a dual motor version as well. Somewhere around 197 kilowatts of output. Uh, and the range somewhere in the 605, but that's an NEDC kilometers rating. So we'll scale that back for EPA. Ah, you know, four, 450 kilometers, something like that, which would be probably pretty good if they're able to do that. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. There's no other details as far as battery size or anything like that. Just saying that BYD is really going to go hard at the European market. Of course, uh, if anybody is uh, starting to see some advertising or some movement from BYD in your European region, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Talked about on the previous show about VW and opening order books in uh, next month in June for the ID3. Well, they've also started to open some stores focusing on the ID3, and they've opened their first store in Dresden in Germany. Uh, the stores are really designed to give people that are interested in exploring uh, EV adoption and what EVs could mean in their lifestyles uh, the opportunity to find out more and all about the e-mobility messaging from Volkswagen. So the stores really aren't designed to be direct sales points for rather their information center. So a little bit different than what Tesla does with their stores where you can actually buy. I'm sure you could probably could buy in the, these areas, but they're not going to be pressured sales uh, elements of any sort where they're going to be more informative and then they'll direct you to either a dealer or possibly online. But it's just good. You know, the more 
out, out, outside presence that we see from the electric vehicle manufacturers and their vehicles, uh, whether it's a store or, or moving displays or anything like that, the more awareness it helps generate and people turn their heads and say, what's that? Let me go get some, uh, some questions answered about what all that is about. So good to see VW continuing with that. Skoda has been doing a lot in the electrification marketplace and uh, they are now announcing their ENYAC, if I got that right, ENYAC 4 or ENYAC IV, depending on how uh, they're naming that. It's a, this a camouflage, you're seeing these pictures of this prototype of a, a all electric model that they're coming up, which should start production around the end of this year. Again, I caution any timelines that you hear on any news reports from anybody, throw them to the timelines to the wind of caution because everything's a moving target right now as far as how things are going on in the world. Um, but their plan is to start production at the end of this year. Of course, it's uh, based on the uh, VW's modular electric drive toolkit or the MEB platform, as everybody is well aware of. This is going to be the first MEB-based Skoda and first MEB-based uh, model produced in Europe, which will be outside of Germany. So it's going to actually be made in Czechia. Um, so good to see that. Um, they're going to have five versions of the ENYAC uh, IV or ENYAC 4. Um, and they're all relatively, con uh, the numbers that you'll, you'll hear are battery pack sizes. So they'll have the IV 50, which is a 55 kilowatt hour battery. Um, the 60, which is 62. And the 80, uh, which is somewhere in the 82. There we go, kilowatt hour battery pack size and various ranges and motor offerings as well to give you different powers. But anywhere from roughly about 211 miles uh, or 340 kilometers and up to ranges of uh, looks like 500 kilometers they're touting on one model they'll be able to get or 311 miles. These are WLTP uh, rating so for EPA subtract a little bit of that uh, 10 or 20 percent possibly off of that let's say 10 percent and see what happens so good good to see uh, Skoda come out with that uh, again it's a um, prototype so I'm sure we'll see more in the fall if the shows continue some of the the car shows that usually happen in the fall if they do happen uh, we'll probably see uh, Skoda out there pushing this thing so anybody has more information or sees one of these please let me know I'd love to hear from you couple quick stories from Tesla. One of them is the new Giga factory or Giga plant that they're looking to build in the U.S. And it looks like they're zeroing in on the Austin, Texas area or somewhere around the Austin, Texas area. Um, this is, again, a speculation. Uh, not, no official announcements have come out. And I typically don't like to report a lot on speculation, but it seems like this one has a bit more meat behind it based on some of the sources uh, from the site that I've uh, picked this up on. So I, I think it's probably got a lot more uh, chance of being <laughs> of happening than not so I'm going to talk about it but it's really um, this factory uh, Tesla's plan if this happens is to start is build uh, build at least one line really fast so uh, so they can start pumping out model Ys at the end of this year and then also uh, for 2021 be able to produce the new Cybertruck in that same plant so they obviously there's a lot of stuff as you folks know going on with tesla and the state of california and their counties and all this kind of stuff as far as opening and elon's twittering and all that stuff i'm not going to get into it but basically they are looking for other areas that they can build vehicles in the u.s as well as the rest of the world of course and it looks like that this is going to be the prime spot they have uh there's been speculation about missouri and tennessee as other states but it doesn't look like that's going to happen uh, seems to be that Texas is probably going to be where they settle, which again, very interesting, right? Texas known as a big oil state, and here they are actually a lot of uh, leading a lot of uh, elements in the green technology and the um, environmental, uh, environmentally conscious movement uh, with some of the com companies and te technologies that are coming out of Texas. So uh, let's wait and see what happens with Tesla there. And sticking with Tesla, a quick news story that just came out before I went to uh, record this show is that Tesla has dropped pricing on most of their product line uh, in various regions, including U.S. and Canada. They've dropped the price on the Model 3 by $2,000 across the board U.S. And the X and S has been lowered by $5,000 U.S. If you go to the Canadian website, you'll see the changes. I think it's... Uh, 
uh, 3,000 and 7,000 Canadian, if I got my numbers correct, but you can go and look at your region to see if, if you're impacted on the websites. Uh, the main emphasis, it seems, is that Tesla's trying to generate sales now that all the sales have slowed down because of the pandemic and especially the hits that we're seeing in the second quarter. Even though EV sales were doing quite well in the first quarter of this year, they are fully expected to really tank for the second quarter. Um, uh, year over year to EV sales. Uh, relative to ISV sales, they may actually increase. Uh, we'll have to wait and see because ISV sales are tanking too. So it's uh, everything's tanking in the next quarter or two and that's just the way uh, it is with everything closed. But uh, you know, it's, it's great to see Tesla lower the prices because I have been saying this for quite some time, folks, about the batteries uh, coming down in price a, a whole lot since, you know, for the last 10 years. Uh, but we haven't really seen um, prices of the vehicles come down in, in relative to that. Tesla has lowered their prices before in small increments or offered additional value for the same price. So they've been pretty good. They're still expensive, but it is great to see this uh, and hopefully that'll generate more sales for Tesla. Just a recap on the Fisker Ocean. I know I've talked a lot about this. Uh, actually, I actually have a friend uh, not too far from where I live who's got one on order and uh, you know who you are. I hope you uh, keep me informed of what's going on. But what I'm hearing is that um, the full details are now available on that particular uh, all electric or they call it all electric luxury SUV, uh, obviously five uh, seater. Um, it's going to come with options like roof rails, towing hook options to, to be able to tow 3,500 pounds or potentially more. Um, some pricing has come out. The base price of the Fisker Ocean is just uh, over 37,000 uh, USD or uh, 30,000, under 30,000 USD with the U.S. federal tax credit, if applicable, which, it, you know, if you can get up to 7,500 on that, it will qualify for the tax credits. Uh, I think the keen idea of Fisker is to get their models out there is to offer some really attractive leasing options and low lease rates of sometime someplace under $400 a month, like $379. We'll keep uh, keep informed. I know there's a lot of folks that have reservations, but it looks like now you can go on their website and get all the information you want for your region. And this just came in as well. Mercedes has now opened the order books for their new EQV all-electric premium minivan. Uh, and it's a, uh, I think I've talked about that oh, several shows ago. It's a beautiful van. Of course, most things Mercedes does is, are very lovely. It's going to start uh, selling in Germany at a price of just uh, over 71,000 euros. So not going to be cheap at all. It's the third electric van from Daimler and the second EQ model after the EQC, which we're still waiting for here in Canada and uh, most of North America. Just saying, Mercedes. Um, it's going to have a 150 kilowatt electric motor, um, uh, 100 kilowatt hour battery, which about 90 is going to be accessible on that, 90 kilowatt hours, AC charging up to 11 kilowatt, DC fast charging up to 110. So eh, that's a little slower than I would hope for that, something like that. Preliminary spec range of 405 kilometers. Um, and that could go up to 418, but that's a, that's a WLTP, so EPA will be a little less. So decent for, again, a big vehicle that's designed to carry a few passengers and stuff. So certainly good for that. Um, Mercedes does manufacture the EQV in the same plant in uh, Spain. Um, that's where these things are going to come out. So I wish them all the best and look forward to seeing some of these as we get closer. All right, mailbag time. Gentleman by the name of Andy in Germany. You know who you are. Thanks very much. Um, mo this is actually more of a, some comments is that um, Andy has just uh, recently uh, taken delivery of his MII all electric uh, vehicle um, in his hometown, in his area. And um, he loves it. He raves about it. It's a, it's a Seat model. If you're not familiar with that, the MI Electric. It's one of, of course, the VW Group family of cars. There's uh, the E Up, the Skoda Citigo E, and the, Se the Seat uh, MI Electric. They're all basically a very similar chassis. And um, he's getting, he's seeing an L a WLTP range of uh, 260 kilometers. Um, and if he's going on the Autobahn at 120 kilometers per hour, he's, he's getting about 160. And uh, he's uh, stating that the car could go up to 360 in stop and go traffic. It's got one pedal, which he loves. And um, he has tried the CC char charging. It only pulls about 40 kilowatts on that car. But again, it's not super big. 
and um, that will do for him in his uh, daily use needs and even the trips that he has to do. So he just sent me an email to give me some updates that he finally got his vehicle and that he loves it and some of these points. So thank you very much, Andy, for that information. Glad you're enjoying it and welcome to the revolution. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks for uh, tuning in, taking some time to spend with me. Again, always thanks for everybody who watches me on YouTube, who comments. If you feel like you want to like the shows, please do. Uh, but it's very important if you can subscribe. If you have not, it's very important. It doesn't cost you anything. You won't get inundated with a lot of communications. Thanks, everybody, of course. You know who you are, my Patreon supporters. Really, really blessed to have you guys and gals. Um, you know, a dollar a month means a lot. It helps me continue with the show. And as we come out of the pandemic, we'll have more, I'll have more stuff to be able to do in the future, of course. So thank you very much for that. Um, of course, I hope everybody stays safe. Please follow your local rules, uh, local uh, health officials for self-distancing and for uh, social awareness and all that kind of stuff that we have to do whether you go back whether countries are opening now please continue to be safe we're not out of the woods on this it's going to take some time let's be smart about it and let's just uh, uh, let's play it safe and do the right stuff so i believe that's it checking out my notes thank you very much for sticking with me as i educate Mines one tailpipe at a time on the EV, EV movement, EV landscape. A lot to say here today. Hope everybody stays safe and thank you very much. And until the next time, I'll see you when I see you. Take care. Bye-bye.